Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on uh, exercising code at the console. Uh, the week one slide deck suggests that you might want to try this. And um, it's, it's entirely optional. I think that it is um, often hard to really, really um, understand this code, even if you do the pencil exercise, unless you have a chance to see it run. So I wanted to suggest this as a possibility. Um, it certainly is optional. You'll use the tool that I'm using here later in the semester, but um, you don't have to start using it this week if you don't want to. So um, I'm, I'm on page eight of chapter one and um, actually working from the bottom up. I'm going to just show you what it's like to use your browser to run code. So uh, let's see. Here I am in Firefox. Uh, this should work from any browser. We recommend Firefox and Chrome, and they're the easiest to get to the, these tools. On Safari, if you still haven't um, switched to, to Chrome for this class, you can still do this, but you may have to do a little bit of extra setup. Um, in general, you should, in your options, be able to find um, web developer tools or more tools and um, find the inspector window, okay? Exactly what the um, command line options or the shortcut keys are for that depend on your browser. So in this case, um, I'm just gonna go inspector. And um, the inspector has several tabs. One helps you look at the HTML, um, but the one we're interested in is this console window. I'm going to open it up just a little bit. And, um, and basically what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like when I'm actually typing in and running this code at the console. Um, these are hidden powers of your browser that you probably don't know about yet. Um, a few people find these things for themselves, but not too many. So um, I'm working from a copy of a book I have here. You should feel free to follow along. Again, I'm on page eight of chapter one. So I'm just going to start by declaring a variable. The name of the variable is circle radius. And you'll note that capital R in the middle, that makes that snake case. So the variable starts with a lowercase c, has an R in the middle that helps distinguish the words, but no spaces, because spaces are not legal in names. And I'm gonna give that a value, okay? Now, I get this little word here that says undefined. Don't worry about that too much. If I actually type in circle radius, and you'll note that the console window is prompting me at this point after I've typed a few characters that make that unique. I can actually hit my tab key um, to get to the end of that and simply hit enter and I'll see that circle radius has a value of 20, which is good because that's what I just typed in. So now if I type, if I create another variable called circle area, and instead of giving it a specific value, I calculate that by taking pi, okay, 3.14, times, okay, the area is pi times the radius squared. So in this case, we're just gonna do the simple thing, which is circle, and if I type the first few characters, again, it keeps prompting me. Okay, so I'm hitting tab instead of typing the whole thing out. Feel free to type it all out if you want. Um, and at that point, I've calculated circle area, and all I have to do to see that value is type in the name. And I can see that that's the value the book said I would get. Now, if I wanted to calculate a different circle area, I can change the value of circle radius to, let's say, half of that value. Okay, so circle radius is now 10 instead of 20, but I haven't recalculated circle area, so it hasn't changed. So I could type this whole line in again. Um, I can actually probably even copy paste it. But again, the, the console window tries to be helpful. Um, and if I hit the up arrow, I can in fact go through a set of things I've typed in. And so I just up arrowed back to the calculation of circle area. I don't need to redeclare the variable. I'm just trying to recalculate it. So I deleted the var at the front. And at this point, I see that the circle area 
based on a circle radius of 10 is substantially smaller than it was when the circle radius was 20. So again, you're not trying to prove to yourself how um, algebra works, but, you're, but you are trying to get a sense for how variables work and how variables and um, constants can be combined to create new values. Now, by the same token, um, if I go up one example on that page, I can create an object called dog. And you'll note the current dog is equal to, and so I've declared a variable called dog. I'm going to give it a value. Um, dog is an object. Don't worry if you don't know what that means yet. We're going to get there. But just copying from the book, the dog's name is Rover. And its weight is 35. So weight and name are properties of the dog object. Again, if I type dog, I'll see that th those are true. Okay. And, um, and then I can type in a little bit of logic. Okay, so this is, we're going we're gonna to use an if statement to make a decision. If the dog weight is greater than 30. Uh, we're going to use the alert function to say woof, woof. Else, we're going to use the alert function. And I'm going to change this just so it looks a little more different um, rather than just uppercase and lowercase. Little dogs say arf arf. I think that's a little easier to see the difference. Okay, so once I type that in and I hit enter, that code's going to execute. And because Rover weighed 35 pounds, the alert I get says woof woof. Okay, an alert simply puts up a message box so I can alert anything I want. Okay. Um, but in this case, we're make, we're, what we alert depends on the decision. Now, if I change Rover's weight to something else, so I just go dog.weight is equal to 15, nothing in particular happens because this code hasn't executed again. It's sitting up there, and unless I were to type it in again, it won't execute. But again, um, the console log will save me work, and if I just use my up arrow key, I can, in fact, get the, get the browser to type all that code back in for me. And at this point, with Rover's weight being 15, I would expect to see an alert that said arf arf when I hit the enter key. Okay, and there that is. So I, this just gives you a nice, simple way to um, interact with code, to try different things, to see error messages. Error messages are good. Um, I didn't try the two examples that are above um, the dog and circle radius ones because they involve function calls that we don't have. So for example, um, there is uh, some code about counting and juggling. And one of the lines in that code is a call to a function called juggle. And if I type that in, I get an error message that says juggle's not defined, okay? And that's because um, we don't have a variable or a function called juggle yet. Um, there's another one to uh, free shipping. We don't have any free shipping to find. And you're gonna see this a lot. Um, because I know what I'm trying to type, it's easier for me. But for example, if I had typed, um, when I typed in circle area, if I had typed in math dot say pi lowercase instead of uppercase, um, and Everything else about this was right. Okay, um, I would expect to see some kind of error message or that circle area gets a value of undefined. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, see how circle area, if I type it in by itself here, 
it is now not a number. We didn't get a valid value. But again, using my up arrows, I can go back to that line I typed wrong, cursor over to the part that I now notice is incorrect, type this as pi, um, all uppercase, hit enter, can I hit enter there? Yeah, and the calculation goes. So you're not going to break your browser. Um, you can uh, make your make your browser look kind of interesting. If I go to um, if I go and I do these document writes that are on page twenty four, I'm not going to type all that code in. But um, if I do a document write of something like "Hello World." Um, I might apparently break my browser because I made the Google page disappear and the text hello world appear. Um, about the only thing you can do to really kill your browser is to write an infinite loop. And it is would be possible for you using the code magnets if you were following that exercise carefully and, and made a mistake to um, write an infinite loop where the code just runs and runs and runs and never finishes and uses up all the memory in your browser. And if you find that your browser becomes completely unresponsive as you're doing this kind of um, coding, just close your browser and open it up again. But that does mean you probably shouldn't have um, eight other windows whose state you care about open while you're doing this. Uh, hope this is fun. Uh, I think it's a lot more interesting to interact with the code than just read about it, even though the book is pretty good about that. Happy coding, folks.